Okay, this is getting crazy now. What's up guys, back with another reaction video. Time we're checking out the five. We're checking out Jessica Tarlov got fired. Why don't we just dive into this, see what's going on in the world, all right? Let's do it. Donald Trump and Joe Biden are battling over who gets the nuke codes, but the two candidates are already going nuclear on one another. President Biden launching this preemptive strike. What, in your view, constitutes the primary threat to freedom and democracy at home? Donald Trump. <laughs> Seriously. Donald Trump talk, uses phrases like, you're going to eviscerate the Constitution, he's going to be a dictator on day one. I can't think of any other time in my lifetime, in history has occurred, that you've had somebody who's had this kind of attitude. Oh, man. Kamala is backing up Joe's fear flex. Had it or hit it, Donald Trump totally had it. Had it. Had it over and over and over again. There's so much at stake in this election. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this genuinely could be the last Democratic election we ever have. You're right. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm young and I've only really experienced the Donald Trump presidency, but wasn't there more class and elegance when people were running for president? I feel like back in the day, they would say, you know what, you won fair and square. I'm going to respect that. It's the American people's decision and they voted for you. So I'm going to root for you and hope for the best because at the end of the day, we're all Americans. You have to show respect. That's just common decency. With Trump? I think, so. <laughs> I, think so. I heard that. Okay. Had it or hit it? Okay. But Trump is not letting those attacks slide. The former president out in Georgia, where he's got a hero's welcome at Chick-fil-A in Atlanta and ordered 30 milkshakes <laughs> for customers who apparently are not lactose intolerant like me. He unleashed the whole arsenal on the Biden regime. We are a nation in decline. Biden is the worst president in the history of our country. He's corrupt and he's incompetent. He can't put two sentences together. And I think we're going to have a tremendous victory. I predict that November 5th will go down as the most important day in the history of our country. He's done more damage than the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country. There has never been anybody that's damaged our country like crooked Joe Biden. Had it or hit it. Apparently, uh, Donald Trump is no Willie Brown, Dana. <laughs> um, so... Do you think, uh, they don't think it's hyperbolic uh, to say this genuinely could be the last Democratic election we ever have. <laughs> Maybe it's me because uh, I was an English major, but isn't that the definition of hyperbolic? I, I, I think you're right. <laughs> Actually, when, and you know what? The next time we play our D-block game, yeah. coming up, folks, that's a deep tease, uh, I will have <laughs> you as my partner. Mm. Um, okay, so they have been talking about protecting democracy for a long time, right? And they've been saying all of this about Donald Trump. And I'm assuming that they did that, one, because they believe it, and also because it probably polls well for them, mm -hmm. for their base, which they still need to lock up. But the problem is, right now, they've squeezed all the juice out of that lemon. Mm -hmm. And President Trump and Donald, uh, sorry, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are tied on yeah. who will protect democracy. So I don't know how much more they're going to be able to do on that one. The other point is you have this really weird dynamic with Biden where in the days leading up to the State of the Union, there were leaks from his administration that he was going to issue some executive orders on immigration in order to get the border under control. Then, the night before the State of the Union, they said, actually, no. Yeah. He's not doing that. And it's because the Republicans didn't pass the bill. And what did we find then four weeks later? Now we are back to he is likely, possibly, maybe going to do this executive order because he realizes how bad it is. And that's how you get to a 70% disapproval on the border. And my last point is, uh, it's the economy, stupid. And when you have an inflation report like the one you had this morning, you will get to inflation, economy, are you better off four year than today than you were four years ago on the cost of your groceries, the cars, the gas, all of that. That's what this election is going to come down to. See, that's also the thing. I don't genuinely believe that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris believe that they think democracy is going to fall into shambles if Donald Trump becomes president. I really don't believe they think that. That's just how you can rile up voters to get them to vote. Like, oh no, we really, really, really need you. Because I don't think anyone can truly say 
that they are better off now than they were four years ago. Just think about how different everything was. The economy was booming. There was low unemployment. Everything was cooking. We were doing great. Whereas right now we have crisis after crisis, whether it's Afghanistan, the border, the Ukrainian war, like all this stuff, this madness was not happening four years ago. So he can't stand on that record. So they got to say, oh no, democracy will end if you don't vote. Come on, you can see right through that. Uh <laughs> Jesse, I'd love to go to some sound on tape. Please. Mm. And then I will come to you after that. Let's roll that, Gladys. <laughs> We're examining whether or not I have that power. There's no, there's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some are suggesting I should just go ahead and try it. And if I get shut down by the court, I get shut down by the court. But we're trying to work, that, work through that right now. Jesse, this is an amazing comparison uh, between a leader and a, and a non-leader. Uh, when China released, got that virus out, you didn't hear Trump go, let's talk about shutting down the border. Let's, he actually acts. This guy goes, you know, let's have a conversation. Let's uh, That's a good talk point. about it. <laughs> and, then, and then nothing happens, and then he returns to it. This guy can't act. Well, he can act when he wants to. Yeah. He acted on bailing out students for their loans. But now he's, I think he's just buying time because he's been debating in his head what he's been doing about this. This is just to kind of entice people to get them all excited about it. But those cameras at Univision made Joe look old. Those were bad cameras. I would never do another Univision again. And he was squinting. I mean, he looks 100 years old yeah. in that shot. That was not a he's good He's not look. a good 80. No, he's it's a, that's an old 80. Yes. Yes. He, they keep saying he's going to end democracy. And I hang around with a lot of liberals. My family's liberals. Even my mother doesn't think he's going to end exactly. democracy. That's what I'm saying. This talking point only exists on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. No one ever even comes up to Johnny on the streets and say, <laughs> says Trump's a dictator or is going to end democracy. I, I've never heard this anywhere except on cable news. It's not sinking in. And if anybody's a threat to democracy, we can play that game. It's Joe Biden. I mean, his buddies at the CIA and FBI interfered in the last election. They're still blocking investigations into the Biden crimes. So if it, I, don't, I don't like playing that game. I don't think that game is effective. I agree with Dana. This is about the economy. Stupid. The Chick-fil-A event. This was an event to behold. Yeah, but now, the thing is, you've heard about people Donald need to Trump vote not based off personality. Listen, you might hate Donald Trump's personality. I'm sure there are people out there. I kind, of, I kind of find them charming. I think he's very charismatic. He could, he could walk into any room and light up the room. But you don't want to vote on personality versus like Joe Biden, who's like sleeping half the time, versus Trump, who's kind of eccentric. You want to vote on who actually improves your life. That is it. Ignore all the noise that, like, this country is going to fall into shambles. For, forget about that. Was your life better now or before? The press is, he's like this dangerous racist. He waltzes in there, orders food, and about a dozen African-American women flock to him and take selfies. African-American women, the most loyal voting bloc of the Democratic Party. He has them giggling. Uh, he has them lining up. Uh, he says, Mom, I'm famous now. It's it, it, all love in the Chick-fil-A. Now, if he can just do this, I would run the Chick-fil-A campaign. That's a great idea. I would just go to as many restaurants, grocery stores, malls as I could Absolutely. and just have regular Americans swarm him, embrace him and love wow. him. And that is what is going to win him the election. Like Tiffany. Yeah, Joe, he's like an everyman. You know, who's Tiffany? Joe wouldn't do that because he's chicken. Because he's chicken. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. You are what you that's eat. terrible. Hey, uh, Judge. So it, 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 I think the did uh, the VP. But yeah, this actually does piss me off about like the world and politics today. Is that if you support one candidate, like say you are African American and you support Trump, people are gonna say, "Oh, you're an Uncle Tom." Blah 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 blah. Like the amount of times I've heard people say that, that is so disrespectful. That's like saying, oh yeah, you don't have a brain, so you're just following whatever they tell you. No, 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 I have a fully functioning brain and I'm able to decipher what the news tells me and whether this is actually accurate and I should believe it or whether it's garbage and it's all propaganda. Like for example, I do like Trump. I think he's a great candidate. He seems like a very good person. But there are some things I do dislike. I feel like every single person should say that. You shouldn't have blind loyalty to one person. Like, yeah, I like Trump a lot, 
but I disagreed about the vaccines. You just have to have a brain and think for yourself. You have to, I'm being persecuted, give me asylum. We shake their hand, we give them a goodie bag. They come in, they take a goodie bag and they steal everything they can from CVS. They beat up the employees at Target and at uh, Macy's. Then they assault the police, resist arrest. There's a trail of destruction economic devastation. And by the way, I don't think this issue got enough attention. Do you know that murders are down in Venezuela, the hot, that more, the lowest they've been in 20 years. So maybe Donald Trump isn't so wrong about people <laughs> emptying out prisons because our crimes are going up and theirs are going down. And everything about what Joe Biden has done is defying the American law, whether it is entry to this country, staying here. And obviously, we've got to not only make sure that they are bailed whenever they're arrested, but we've got to deport them. Mm -hmm. You know, Jessica, in the green room, you said <laughs> that if Trump wins, it could be the end of all time and space. And what's worse, it will hurt women and minorities more. I did say that. Yes, you did. It's extreme pregnancy <laughs> fog, I guess, as I near the end of the line. Um, that was a very rich discussion. I'm going to try to address as many of the points as I possibly Just can. Just one. A commercial break in about 30 seconds. No, 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 no. Commercial break is when I am done with it. <laughs> so the, the, on this the threat to democracy point is not working. And all of the good pollsters have made that point very clear to the Biden administration that actually the messaging that works is about the mundane stuff that people want to hear about lowering prescription drug prices and things like the debt and the deficit and preserving Medicare and Social Security. Those are all encompassed in the economy, right? Like how you're doing and how your family's going to survive looking ahead to the future. So that point is definitely out there. But to say that Joe Biden is the threat to democracy, considering what Donald Trump and his band of lawyers tried to pull off in 2020 is complete insanity. I mean, he dispatched lawyers all over the country to overturn a free and fair election. A lot of them have pled out to doing this. A lot of them are still to face trial. And he's doing his darndest to make sure that he doesn't have to show up in any of these courtrooms because he's definitely afraid of what's going to happen there. And as many of these January 6th participants... He's not participant, afraid of anything. All big man not Excuse afraid. Excuse me? Think. He's afraid to... What, what world is this girl living in? Running for president, what do you expect? Do you expect him to go to every single hearing, every single thing regarding this fraudulent case? No, he's got things to do. He's a multi-billionaire running for president. His days are extremely busy. I don't think he's afraid of this at all. I think he's afraid what happens to this country if he does not get elected, which is why he's got to go out there and campaign. Oh, well, okay, yeah. I'm sure you, you do know him, and I don't know him, but I don't think that that man who doesn't want to even sleep in a hotel bed wants to go to jail. So don't refute what happened. We know about Sidney no Powell. We know about John Eastman, who just got disbarred. The Rudy Giuliani, who's obviously not in very good position, how the mighty have fallen. But the point of this interview and doing it with Univision was about Latino support, right, and making sure that he shores that up. And he's down, he was up 29 points of Latinos the first year in office, and that edge is down to nine points. And that's due to the issues of inflation and crime. He's doing better on them, but he's obviously got ground to make up. And it's interesting that this came out yesterday, and we had the ruling taking us back to 1864 in Arizona about abortion, because Latino votes in, in Nevada and Arizona are what are going to be really crucial there. 57% of Hispanics say abortion should be legal in all or most cases. And Donald Trump is out there defending his stance of, you leave it to the states. He did say today, I won't support a federal abortion ban. He has said before that he supports a 15 or 16 week ban. So I, I don't know if he's going to be consistent with that. But the Democrats are going to make that a centerpiece of this conversation, as they should. Mm. What I really yeah. love yeah. is what yeah. Donald Trump said right there. Because by putting the power to the states, that is what the founding fathers wanted. The federal government should not be ruling over the entire country with an iron fist. The states should have more individual power. They can determine what happens in their state, what doesn't happen in their state. I would say I'm a libertarian because I just want the federal government hands off. Stay out of our business and let the states decide what is right. I just don't want the federal government to have this power because once they do, they, they're going to abuse it. Going back to the illegal immigrant situation, the day that an illegal immigrant has more power and more respect from the government than an actual citizen, 
is a day that our country is falling apart and that's happening right now we it's like a failed society that we're in right now it is the biggest joke i don't know how the government's getting away with this and how people aren't protesting but it's insane it's gotta be fixed and i i hope it does but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash your like comment subscribe and uh wish you guys nothing and i wish you guys nothing but the best till next time